All right, everybody, thanks for watching this video. I'm gonna give you a quick introduction to the Monument Solar Racking System. Here behind me, you can see actually my home. This is where I live. When we're out on the road traveling, I'm with my wife and four kiddos. Um, now we actually have our fifth. So we have my wife and five kiddos living in this RV, just exploring the nation and having an absolute awesome adventure. So um, what makes this really possible for us is well, with our solar system, we are not tied to having to stay at campgrounds or RV parks or RV resorts. Um, we can go to the destinations that we want to. We can do what's called boondocking or dry camping, and that saves us the $40 to $100 a night that we otherwise would have to pay um, staying out at an RV park or resort or campground. So um, I'm going to walk through this system at a high level, helping you guys understand really what makes our product different than what you might out what, what else you might find on the market, but uh, let's jump into it. So to give you a quick uh, understanding of what you're looking at here, um, this is what's called a fifth wheel. Um, it hooks into my truck and I tow it around, unhook it, and then we have our vehicle to go around and see what we need to, right? Um, this is 43 and a half feet long and our rig is about eight and a half feet wide. Our systems can go all the way down to, I think it is just under, one inch under the eight, eight foot mark. So depending on how, what your, you know, that is the minimum for our systems that pretty much any RV out there um, will be wide enough to accommodate this system. Um, another thing I want to point out to you is this RV, when I first bought it, I got it quoted out for solar installation. Um, I was getting, you know, they, with this size rig, they're telling me they could put about 2,500 watts on the roof. Now, uh, there was one person that said they could do 3,000 watts of roof, or solar bolted to my roof, um, but that was taking up every single square inch and doing it the, we call it the Tetris style, where you are putting the panels anywhere you possibly can, um, where there's not a, a, a vent cover or a sewer cap or an air conditioner, things like that. Um, that approach as well you end up having to worry about shading from the AC units. Um, the angle of the panels is different, at, you know, on different parts of the roof. So you have to run different runs down to the battery bank. Um, a lot of different things that really didn't make it uh, very accommodative and, and not something that I wanted on my RV. So we developed this solution here to give you an idea. Um, they were quoting me out about 2,500 watts on the roof. Um, this is, this system here is using 440 watt panels. I have 5,280 watts on my roof. Um, I can run both of my air conditioners and charge my batteries at the same time to give you a sense of the power that we have available to us. Now, we also, we, if we were to use a 450 watt panel, um, it'd actually be 5,400 watts base, and we'd be using a bifacial panel, which would actually incorporate um, the light, the ambient light that can bounce off the roof or that's around the RV, it can be picked up from below on the panels as well. That system would be based at 5,400 watts and it'd go up to, all the way to 6,350 watts. Um, that is a tremendous amount of power and I'll explain to you in a little bit why that's actually important. You'll never need it under ideal conditions, but when it's less than ideal, that's where it really kicks in for you. Now, Couple things about the system. If you notice, it's very modular. This is our 12 panel Denali system. It's a Denali 75, meaning we have 75 inch long panels and there's 12 of them. That's the Denali 75. We also have 68 inch panels that are a little bit shorter. And what that does is having these two sizes of panels allows us to you know, adjust the size of the system to accommodate for different roof lengths. Our goal is to help you maximize as much power on that roof as you possibly can get, right? Um, that way you can really, really use the, your RV the way you were hoping to do when you initially bought it, right? So, but our system comes in a two panel system. You can do four, six, eight, 10, 12, um, 14. Um, pretty much the, the, the number of panels doesn't necessarily matter, matter as long as you have the roof space and, and room to, to mount the system. Now, a few things I want to point out to you that makes our system unique over what you might find out in the market, okay? Very first thing, 
our system comes packaged, ready to go, everything you need to make it and to install it on your roof or have somebody else install it. Um, it comes in a box, right? Or a few boxes. Um, we're not sending you to Home Depot or Lowe's or some other source to buy 30 feet of aluminum angle iron or a bunch of bolts and screws and what have you. Um, it literally comes in a box. You, you have everything you need, the great instructions and everything with it as well. And then you can have the system put on your, on your RV. Now, the next thing I want to point out to you is where, where are all the holes from when we bolt um, this thing to your roof? If you notice, we have these what are called uh, the base feet. And the racking system is mounted to this, and the cable works as well are, are connected up with those base feet. These are four inches wide, about 20 inches long, and they really distribute the weight of the system over a wider space. It also gives you a bigger footprint to actually bolt these, the system back onto your roof and allows it to really grab onto the roof and, and hang on really well. So that is where all of the bolts of the system, all the holes in your roof are being placed on these feet. We're not putting holes all over your roof um, like a traditional solar installation. In fact, last time I did the, 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 the math on it, we used 38% fewer bolts on a per watt installed basis than a traditional installation, okay? And not only are they bolted on the strongest part of the RV roof, which is right over the sidewalls, but they're also in isolated areas. So for easy maintenance, when you need to waterproof it, um, get up there and check things, um, it's super easy. You can just go, it's all isolated in these, these specific areas. Now I started to mention to you, I'm not sure how well you can see this in the actual video, but between the feet and these racking posts, there are um, support cables that are put in place that are tensioned down and help give these, these posts and the whole racking system a lot of support and strength. Um, so it's, we call those our cable trusses. And what that actually does is it allows, if there's only one welded component on this entire RV, and that sits right here where this post comes down and mounts to these, these uh, base feet. And you might ask yourself, well, why, what's, what's wrong with welding things? Um, nothing per se, but when you are traveling down the road at 65, 70 miles an hour, or what have you, and you hit a pothole, and there's a really hard jar on your, your RV, welds are uh, potentially less forgiving than, than uh, the bolts and and that's some different things that other fasteners that we have put in place here. So heaven forbid that something were to fail in that weld right there, these cables are also in place to keep that in place and have, keep it from flying off the roof, okay? So there's a lot of redundancy in our engineering to ensure that these, this racking system does not come off your roof, okay? Now you'll notice a few other things right here. So if you're coming down this, straight down the middle of this, of it between the panels, you can kind of see a small gap there. That is our catwalk. That is intentionally um, put into our design. And what that is, is a six inch gap, which allows you to traverse the full length of your RV from the safety of the center of your roof. A lot of these um, one-off creations that we've seen out on the road, put these panels across your, your RV on some racking system but there's no, no way to really get through and check things and what have you without crawling underneath or shimmying yourself along the outsides of the RV roof. Not the most ideal thing if you want to get up there and actually clean your panels or do um, other maintenance and checking and all that stuff, right? And so we intentionally incorporated that small gap between the panels um, so that you could traverse all the way along the your roof. You can get up there and polish up your panels if you'd like to get up there and check the, the bolts and, and what have you, the fasteners to make sure they're, they're still tight. Um, we wanted to make that easy for you. In addition to being able to traverse that roof and you know, all the way along uh, the full length of your roof, that gap serves a second purpose. And that second purpose is for uh, reducing shading when you optimize your solar panels for um, you know, solar production. So let's say you head down to Quartzsite, Arizona during the winter time and you want to angle your panels a little bit more so that you can really get as much power as you can with the sun really low in the sky, right? Well, what's beautiful about our system 
um, is as these panels are tilted, they, these, these panels will tilt 90 degrees in either direction, okay? Um, both the right and left side, okay? Now, when you tilt them in the same direction, what will happen is the back panels will often be shaded. And so people are like, let's not, let's not tilt our panels because it negates the whole purpose if, if we start getting shading, right? Well, what's great about our setup is as you tilt the panels in that direction, two things happen. The first is this pan these panels here that are closer to the sun, as they tilt toward the sun, they're going to pivot from a point closer into the center of the solar panel. And what that does is it actually allows those panels to dip lower than the panels that are in the back. Because the ones on the back are actually going to tilt past the edge of the solar panel. It's going to actually lift them up higher. So the back side is going to lift up higher, the front's going to dip down lower, and that gap down the middle also pushes those panels further apart so that the shading on the back panels is, is mitigated a lot. Now you might ask, so what, what, what are we talking? If we were to tilt the panels, how much gain do I really get? Well, to give you an idea, the, when I did this test, was, uh, we were in southern Utah during the um, you know, late, late winter, and I was getting about 48% of my rated capacity with my panels flat. Okay? Um, I then tilted the panels, and my front panels uh, got up to 98% of their rated capacity. Okay, I went from 45 up to 98%. I mean, that's, that's doing pretty good, I think. The back panels, they also got a gain. They, they were shaded more than, than the front. You know, the front were hardly shaded at all. And, um, and so with the backs being a little bit shaded, we still saw a gain, it went up to 63, 63% of our rated capacity. So up to 98% on the front, I jumped up to about 63%, I think it's like a, like a 15, you know, 12 to 15% gain on the back as well. Um, and in those winter months, every gain is, is beneficial for you. So, um, okay, so that's, those are some of the main key features of this, of this system here. Um, what I'm wanting to do in this quick series is go through each of these components and really help you understand what, what went into the engineering and the design to make sure that this system is, was super strong and robust. Uh, we already talked about the base feet. We already talked about the cable, the cable trusses. But there is a number of other components that I want to walk through with you to kind of explain what it is that makes us different than what you'll find um, out on the market. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to you know, check out the other ones we have in this series. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to my, me or my, or my team. And we're, we'd be happy to you know, walk through any questions you might have about our systems, um, the pricing, the functionality, um, installation locations. Um, we're happy to you know, walk you through all that. So uh, with that, thank you again for your time and we'll see you on the next one.